Hello everybody, this is September and I'm checking in from the Thunderwing server today. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to a new spreadsheet I made for the tier one or the first stage of the trade packs. Um, this is going to be a new tool uh, which will allow you to tell the profit potential of either a single pack or if you're running multiple packs, it'll tell you that too. You'll be able to find out which packs are the most profitable profitable based on not only where you turn them in but also the ingredient cost and ultimately it will give you the best silver to labor ratio many of you may be thinking ah dang it it's just another trade pack spreadsheet we've all seen those already well this thing is much much more and i gotta admit I actually had a ton of fun making this one. And so I'm really super, super excited uh, to see how you guys actually like it, uh, especially you guys that do a lot of trade pack runs. I actually thought this thing was so cool. I even wanted to go <laughs> run some packs myself. All right, well, maybe not run some packs, but I will admit last night after I finished this up, I had a little bit trouble sleeping because I was so excited to get you guys this information. Okay, so let's get into the sheet. First, I want to give credit to uh, a user on Twitch. For some reason, uh, their name is eluding me, but they whispered me after I showed my seedbed, uh, my seedbed spreadsheet that uh, I use to to calculate basically the same thing that this sheet is going to do: the silver to labor ratios for planting seed beds. And I had uh, I have completely forgot their username, but we had a great chat uh, after a, tr a Twitch stream, and they recommended I do one for the trade packs. So this is for you, my friend. All right, here she is, glorious, beautiful. Oh, she is simply an unimposing data collection that just begs you to engage. But before we do that, let me tell you about her tabs. Uh, first, there's the overview tab. This is basically just sim simple use information. Um, the next tab is the calculations tab. This is actually the tab that you're gonna interact with uh, and you're gonna get information that hopefully helps you make better decisions in the game. Uh, next is the zones tab. And this is just a list of the pack types and the pack names. And finally, the last tab is the pack info tab. And this holds a lot of the data, uh, which has like materials uh, to make the packs, quantities of materials, the labor costs to craft and turn in. Um, all that good stuff is here on this last tab. Okay, so let's get on to how she works. The only tab that you, as I said before, that really need to engage with is her calculation tab. So here's some quick rules. Anything that is underlined in blue is a selection or a drop down menu. You'll need to, you know, pick something there. Anything with a purple box is the input tab, meaning you need to physically type a number in here. Uh, when you input numbers, make sure that you use the correct decimal places. For instance, 20 silver is 0 0.20. Uh, copper is 0 0.0030. And so to help you with that, I've actually put some examples of, you know, values, and then I show you the correct way to input that in column F and G on her calculation tab here. Uh, so if you feel like you're lost and having trouble with that, I, even I do myself, I find that a lot of times when I'm thinking 20 silver, 30 copper, I want to type 20.3, but you really type 0 0.203. That's 20 silver, 30 copper. Anyway, once you get used to that, this will be really easy. Uh, lastly, uh, one other thing I want to point out is when you change a value in a selection menu, the spreadsheet doesn't automatically zero out. Unlike a web page, which would be really easy to do, um, if we could ever get an API, man, I could do some really cool stuff for you guys. But at last, we don't have an API. But unlike a web page, when you change the drop-down menu, you can, you can make everything zero out, so you have to input all the data 
Spreadsheets don't do that. They just hold the last value you put in it. So if you change something that uh, changes the ingredients or something that's in a pack, you need to make sure that you go through each one of these inputs and get them correct. Okay, so we're going to do some testing here. So actually, we're going to look at some examples. First of all, if we look at my character, uh, my name, uh, well, you guys know me. I'm September, but I live in the Solus Headlands, uh, which is Herania side. So I'm going to look at making packs that are local to my area. So we're going to take a look at three packs. First, we're going to look at the Herania Specialties, which has the Gilda pack and the non-Gilda pack. And so the first one that we're going to look at is the Solus Juice Concentrate. So I select this, the specialties, then I select the Juice Concentrate, Solus Juice Concentrate, and then I tell it how many packs that I'm going to be making. How many packs are you going to take on this run? You can look at one and do multiply it by how many ever packs, um, or you could just enter in the total packs. Uh, I happen to have the eight slot hauler in game, as you can see here. Got eight slots plus one on the back, so I can do nine packs at a time. And so once I got that selected, the next thing I need to do is input the value of the materials. So here it's going to tell me, here's the materials, and here's what I need. I need 50 medicinal powders, and I need jujubes. So what I have to do is find the per unit value of a medicinal powder and a jujube. So the easiest way I, I, I can tell you to do that is just open your auction house. You look at medicinal. These are right now 4 silver, 29 copper. That's 4 silver, 29 copper. The jujubes are exact, uh, exactly what I got here, 20 silver each. So that's going to tell me that this pack is going to cost me 5 gold and 14 silver, 50 copper to craft per pack. I'm going to do 9 of them, so that's going to give me the total cost for this trade run as 46 gold. The next thing I have to do is select where I'm going to turn it in. Uh, if I select a location that I can't turn it in at, it's going to come up with this stuff here, value, 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 saying that you've, you have you picked a location you can't turn it in at. Uh, because it is made in Solus and I'm Harani, uh, the only thing that, the only two places I could turn this thing in is Villanelle or Yenistir. Okay? So I'm going to pick Yenistir because I know that that is the most valuable turn in location. And plus, from Solus, you would just take a boat and take it up, drive it, or float it up to Yenistir. Uh, next thing is the turn-in percentage. How, you know, how, what is the turn-in percentage? You can look that up in game if you so choose to. Uh, that is done by, how is that done? Trade pack info, shift O. And so you, you could go here and say, Harania, Solus headlines, turn-in Yenistir, search, and then go down and say, oh, look, juice concentrate, 130%. Well, that's what I figured it would be anyway. Okay, and the next thing, the next two things is the labor modifiers. Okay, so these column C and column D, there's actually two different labor modifiers. Uh, it will use commerce if you're doing a specialty pack, fertilizer pack, because that's the skill that you're going to be using. September has a 30% labor reduction uh, based on his, because he is a celebrity, uh, celebrity trade commerce guy. So you can look at that here. He is a celebrity. His commerce is 172,000. Um, and then you could also verify that those numbers are accurate, but I, I'm pretty confident they are. So if I open up my, my folio here and say, okay, I'm going to make a solace juice concentrate, it tells me it's 38. Uh, 38 uh, labor points per pack to craft, and down here you can see, whoops, need to be a little bigger there. You can see the, uh, that should be bold. There we go. Uh, you can see that the actual labor to craft it is 38 silver. Uh, and then the turn in is going to cost me 49 labor to turn it in. So what this over here is, the labor modifier for husbandry, that is for larders. And uh, we'll look at that here in a minute. So anyway, long story short, on this first trade pack, the uh, the total labor is going to take me to make nine of these is 783. Make and turn them in, I should say. Uh, the total value, the amount of gold I would be get af after I turn them in, is basically 130 gold and 97 copper or 97 silver, 57 copper. 
which gives you a profit of 84 gold. That's the total cost minus the total value is 84 gold. And then that would give me a silver to labor ratio, uh, which is the, uh, the uh, labor. I'm sorry. Let me just look at this. Yeah, it is the, uh, the total value, the total profit divided by the total labor. Oops. So that is 10 silver, basically 11 silver per labor point. It's not horrible, um, but, you know, that is a pretty hefty run to go from uh, Solus to Yenister for 10 silver. But, you know, it's up to you. And so now I'm going to show you how this works when you look up another one. So we're going to quickly go over here and we're going to say I want to do the Solus Alchemy Oil. Um, and I have the same values here. The only thing that I need to change uh, we have medicinal powder is the first item. Then we have yada fur, which is actually, uh, I've already looked it up. It is like four silver per. Uh, and then we have a Gilda star. You can say Gilda stars are free. And so if you wanted to say, hey, my Gilda stars are free. I don't value them as anything. You can put zero in here. I don't recommend do that, doing that because Gilda stars do have some value. Some people say they're like five gold each. Personally, I value them about two and a half, uh, two and a half gold each. That's the value I'm going to use. Remember, this is your spreadsheet. Put in whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, so those are the three materials to make this pack. That's going to tell me each pack is worth uh, 6.93 gold. That's how much it's going to co cost me to craft it. This whole wagon is going to be 62 gold. Again, we're going to take it to Yenister. I'm going to expect my turn-in percentage to be 130%. My commerce modifier has not changed, so it's still 30. Husbandry does not matter at this point. And so... The, the turn-in value per pack at Yenistir is uh, 15.28 gold. Thank you, ArcadeTools.com, for that. Uh, and then the crafting labor, again, is the same amount. Turn-in labor is 49. Again, giving me a total of about uh, 10 silver per labor point. It's about the same, although I probably would make the other pack because I don't want to use up my guild of stars like that. And the last thing I want to do is look at larders. And everybody says larders are so great. Well, I've looked at a few of them using this thing. I don't think they're that great. <laughs> but, you know, you know, maybe you'll find one that I missed. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what I've got down currently in game here. Uh, I actually have, because I needed to get the labor points, I actually have a cheese larder. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with this thing. But anyway, I have a cheese larder down, so let's take a look at the... Uh, Harani, I need to change this first drop down to the aged. And then, as you see, that this didn't change it. And when I changed that, it didn't change this. But if I select this, you'll see that the only options that I can now choose are the aged option. So we're going to go ahead and pick Solis Aged Cheese. Uh, I'm only going to do one of these. And so now I need to find the value of a milk, lemon, and a larder rack. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Milk uh, is five silver, so 0 0.0518. The lemon is, man, this would be so much easier if there was an eight API. Oh, it's down to eight silver, is that? Oh, no, that's kind of high. So uh, let's just use the, the value that's there, 0 0.08. That's eight silver. I'll put that in. Oops. 0 0.08 that's eight silver uh the larder rack now even if you craft these yourself even if you find your royal seeds yourself everything if you get your own wood you get your own lumber the the uh act of putting down the larder rack consumes that value i don't care how you get it if you use it you have consumed the value and that is going to be a big point of contention, I think, for some people. But a larder rack does have some value because if you use it, that means you couldn't have sold it for the current value, which right now is 10 gold, 10 gold and 28 silver. So by using it, you have consumed that profit. That's all I'm trying to say. So that, that particular pack is going to cost me 15 gold and 27 silver each even if i were to take it to the best possible location yenister with the highest turn in percentage um which is 130 uh, percent 
and I've got my commerce labor modifier that'll help me on the turn in, but now the husbandry modifier comes in and you can put in whatever, whoever's going to pick up the larder um, because that's the, that's the, uh, that's the person that is using the labor. Um, so I have an alt that has a high husbandry, so I can say 40, I've, I'm getting a 40% deduct, or I'm sorry, a uh, max deduction, which is a 40% labor savings. Um, but if I were to use September, September only has uh, 10K. That would, that would, uh, that would dramatically, so look at this value here, the pickup value. When I change that to 40%, yeah, so it's saving me, you know, 24 labor. But if I were to do it with September, I'm paying the full Monty there. I'm paying all that labor, 60. So that, if I were to use September and not my alt, look at the silver to labor ratio on this cheese pack. Five silver. That's, I could, an ancestral coin purse, even a prince's coin purse is almost better than this. This is why people say that uh, the aged packs are so bad and people aren't doing them. This is the problem. And from what I understand, they're actually going to get worse in 4.0. Oh, oh, ah. uh, anyway, that is, that's the numbers, man. The numbers don't lie. Even if I had that 40% reduction here, it's only bumping it up to a paltry 7 silver per labor pack or per labor point. That is that is pretty horrible, but hey guys, you use this spreadsheet how you want to use it. Okay, so after all that, that was just some quick examples of how I chose to use this spreadsheet, but the possibilities of using her are endless. Whether you're Nuya or Herania, uh, you can use this spreadsheet for all your tier one trade packs. That's the intercontinental trade packs, first age trade packs. And really, depending on this spreadsheet's popularity, uh, I will also be adding the Aurora packs as well as the Tier 2 and Tier 3 trade packs. So what I ask you to do is download this spreadsheet and tell me what you think. I want your feedback. Let me know if something needs changed or it could be better here or this doesn't make sense. Let me know. I need that information. Um, so there will be a link to this document on a uh, media fire, which is just a uh, like a file sharing uh, site. Uh, so you'll need to go there, download the spreadsheet, and the link will be in the video description, which actually brings me to another point, is I did put this uh, spreadsheet on Google Docs, like I always do, but after looking at it on Google Docs, I found that some of the advanced functionality I had to use to actually make this spreadsheet work didn't work there. So like always, and most importantly, in this particular case, you do have to download this spreadsheet and use it locally. Um, if the way the trade pack system works and what I hear in 4.0 is the larders are getting changed or there's going to be some changes coming to trade packs, uh, then this spreadsheet will need to be updated to reflect any change like that which you can do on your own because you have a local copy, um, or I will release a follow-up if somebody doesn't do that for me. That being said, this spreadsheet is yours, ours, and everybody's. I give anybody and everybody 100% full rights to reuse this data and any of the coding that I did uh, in any way that you feel like it's going to be helpful to the community. I also want to give credit to arcagetools.com for posting the turn in values on their website. As you can see here, um, it actually made my life last night much, much easier. So thank you once again, you guys over at arcagetools.com. You rock. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. I as always, I hope you found this video both helpful and informative. You can support me by hitting the subscribe and like buttons on your way out. Additionally, you can give me a follow on Twitch, Twitter, as well as Patreon. Remember, I do a Friday Twitch stream, and this week is no different. Um, I'm going to have try-on creator codes to give away. So I will be giving out the squirrel glider codes every 45 minutes. So be sure to stop by for a chance to win and a, uh, the opportunity to, champ 
chat with your fellow gamers. We can look at stuff just like I'm showing you here uh, or one of the many other spreadsheets that I have available. So until next time, this is September saying, be well.